So this is what we have. We have the uh, implant systems, and we're going to show this one particular implant system, S-I-N, um, and for replacing a tooth in um, a person, the edentulous uh, ridge, as you can see on the mandible here, we have to replace some teeth. So let's say we want to replace one tooth. And um, for imagination purposes, got the rest of his other teeth. So let's give our model a name. Fred, say hello. All right, Fred. So the first drill is called the pilot drill. Okay, the pilot drill is what your initial marking is going to be. And with implant dentistry, it is super important to make sure you have good irrigation. So the irrigation that is flowing through and cooling down the bone of the patient is very important. Sometimes um, we advocate even putting these bags of irrigation in refrigerators to chill them so that you can keep the irrigation line cool. So because going back to just physics, this produces heat as it's going into a bone and the more dense the bone is, the more heat it's going to produce. So we have to irrigate to reduce the amount of uh, heat that could potentially kill additional bone cells that are there. We don't want that. We want to, we want to, is a happy medium between trying to save what we can. Now, when we're doing this initial drilling, the first pilot, is made as such. So let's take a look. This is the marking where we want to go for that first implant. The pilot drill is going to show us and it doesn't have to go all the way down. It's just a pilot. It's just an initial marking, like a score, like where we are going and the direction we are going at. Then you have a series of drill bits, osteotomy burrs, that will take you to shape the osteotomy site. Now, as a surgeon, everything is already pre-planned. And when you're putting an implant into this site, Let's say for this Fred, we are putting a 3.8 by 11 and a half implant. So if we're doing that, we need to shape this osteotomy site. And at the same time as a surgeon, we have to realize how the bone density is because sometimes all these x-rays and radiographic markers that we take and make can tell us one thing, but once we're in a patient's mouth and on the bone, it's another thing. Now, all of these drill bits have different markings. The different markings are meant to have uh, the different depth. So the first is five millimeters then we go to six millimeters, then seven millimeters, then eight and a half millimeters, then 11 and a half millimeters, then 13 millimeters, and then finally 15 millimeters. These are the different markings for this particular implant system. Okay, so, what we have here um, is a caliper, and it's important. Even though um, whatever implant system you're using, it doesn't, you know, whatever implant system you're using, 
sometimes these drill bits get mixed up. And despite that, it's very important to have a caliper of some sort to be able to measure these things. So I have multiple calipers. This is a large caliper uh, for sometimes when I do facial cosmetics or orthognathic surgery. Um, but you can dial it to any position. Let's say our osteotomy site, we've um, looked at the x-ray and we're planning an 11 and a half millimeter implant so that it can be away from the inferior alveolar nerve of Fred. So because of that, we are going to be 11 and a half millimeters length with the implant, which means this. Now, a lot of the implant systems have their markings on the tray, but we want to be all inclusive here so that you are knowledgeable uh, all across the globe. So what we do is now we are setting up a series of osteotomies. We have piloted our first osteotomy and we are going to continue to shape our osteotomy site above that first solid line. Now, some systems have drill stoppers or drill stops because there is that nerve that comes across, which is the inferior alveolar nerve. And you got to be at least two millimeters, if not five millimeters away from that. Um, so we wanna make sure you are keeping that in mind when creating your osteotomy site on the mandible. So we will drill. And of course, there's going to be in real life a lot of irrigation and rinsing so that there is no overheating. Another tidbit is that these drills, you know, we do evidence based medicine and dentistry, cannot be used more than 25 times because they the flutes start to get dull. So you have to keep track of that. And it, not necessarily the kit will be used 25 times, but each drill bit has to be replaced. So to prevent overheating of the bone, this is bone science and bone anatomy. So we'll go in and come out 11 and a half. Now, this is really soft bone. So I have drilled 2.7 and then a 3.0, our planned osteotomy and implant is a 3.8 by 11 and a half. So we will open up the implant. Obviously using sterile gloves your assistants should put the stickers, keep track of the record for the implant. And that's important because for future reference, this patient's getting this implant. In this case, Fred is going to have this implant placed and it's going to be in them for as long as we would hope for. And they can ma maintain this particular gadget will grab the implant and engage into it. Now, this is a torque wrench so that you can engage how much torque you are administrating when you're placing the implant. These torque wrenches are real sweet and nifty, but they do need a little bit of attention. So just to put a little time and effort into the torque wrench, let's take a look here. This piece comes out. All right. The torque wrench is an important part because 
it uh, helps you engage how much torque you are, are uh, distributing on the implant itself. And there, there are several components and you can disengage it to troubleshoot it. But this part has to be nice and snug uh, for the SIN. This marker can be flipped to go this way. So if you're going righty tighty, okay, righty tighty, or uh, if you're going lefty loosey, uh, but you do want to see a torque number, then what happens is you have to flip this this way. And then now you can go this way and then engage into torque. So let's go and try to place this implant. So what we're going to see is this particular um, gadget is the implant torque wrench uh, along with the implant carrier is going to engage internally into this uh, conical, internal conical shaped implant. Um, when taking out the implant, you don't want the surfaces are treated uh, and you'll see in, if you've ever been in the operating room with osteo um, or orthopedic surgeons, you'll see them in spacesuits doing uh, knee replacements and hip replacements. Well, it's similar. We want this to be as sterile as possible, going as sterile as possible into the jawbone without touching anything. So we're going to put this into the osteotomy site and put very passive pressure. Now, remember, this marking is that way. Nope, I need to mark it the other way because now it's righty tighty, okay? And as I am engaging into the, the bone, uh, you can see it's ratcheting. That's what it is, ratchet. And remember, this bone I've noticed was very hypodense. Fred here, our friend, was hypodense. And we put out for a 3.8 implant. But if you remember, we underprepped. We only used this osteotomy burr and this osteotomy burr, which is the 2.7 and the 3.0. We didn't go to the full uh, max, so we underprepped it. In fact, you may have, even if it's even less dense than that, you may even eliminate this. However, if the bone is more dense, then you do want to prep to that osteotomy diameter. Then we're gonna keep going. Oh, we got Fred. We got we got a nice implant in you, Fred. Oh, look at that torque. How can you get a torque like this on a model like this? Impossible, right? But uh, SIN implant system, that's remarkable. Look at that. That's what we call good torque. All right, so now that the implant is at the level of the bone, we can put the cover screw, the healing cap, or if this is a full arch case, then we're going to put multi-unit abutments.